I'm fucking with Rams Club. I don't even fuck. We're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work, though. She's doing that. Max, so we get that oh, okay. You feel what I'm saying? You saw that wild DK, ass hair? Like, trust me. We've already done it. You feel what I'm saying? We already done it. We already did the same Rolling the motherfucking Grams Club, I don't even fuck. We're gonna make it work, though. We're gonna make it work, though. She's doing that. Max, so we get that motherfucker ready. Oh, okay. You feel what I'm saying? You saw that wild DK, ass hair? Like, trust me. We've already done it. You feel what I'm saying? We already done it. We already did the same. Like, Rolling the motherfucking Grams Club, I don't even fuck. We're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work, though. We're gonna make it work, though. I'm
You feel what I'm saying? You saw that wild ass right. hair? Like, trust me. We've already done it. You feel what I'm saying? We already done it. We already did this thing. Like, Rolling the motherfucking Grams Club, but I don't even feel it. We're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work, though. She's doing that. Max, he so he get that oh, okay. You feel what I'm saying? You saw that DK wild ass right. hair? Like, trust me. We've already done it. You feel what I'm saying? We already done it. Uh, 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 Rolling the motherfucking Grams Club, but I don't even feel it. We're gonna make it work. Though. That bitch, man. We're gonna make it work, though. <laughs> She's doing that. He so he get that oh, okay. You feel what I'm saying? You saw that wild DK, ass hair? Like, trust me. We've already done it. You feel what I'm saying? We already done it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
smoke weed, brownies, and, and cush joints, and coffee, sway bucks. <laughs> Come fuck with me. The Grammy. What Grammy? Boy, what Grammy you talking about, boy? Hey, somebody get that nigga on the phone. Who, Metro? I ain't got Metro no. I ain't got that phone. Yo, VA, you got his number? Metro. Hey, hey Metro, you got Nino number? Yo, Metro, call his number. 444239529. Call me right now, bro. I watch the throne is nominated. Oh, I'm going to get a Grammy for that shit if that shit win. Right, Speedy? Mm -hmm. Ooh! Fuck you, motherfuckers. You Boy, I met y'all, what the hell you talking about with some Grammys, boy? Is it album of the year? But it's me right here, boy. What's up with it? I'm gonna call you right back. Oh, boy, hold on. Get this phone. But let me get that. Woo! Sizzle. What's my motherfucking name? Bro, if we win a Grammy, my nigga at 20 and 22, Speedy. Yeah. My price just went up. <laughs> Speedy, how much can I charge with a Grammy? Come back, people ain't, you know, people ain't spending 100, 200,000 no more. Damn, that shit. I wish I would've been older. Shit, I'd have probably motherfucking, well, uh, 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 he paid 150 for, uh, what's the name to do that fucking, uh, good, good feeling, me? Go around, dude. Yeah, I did, I did that, um, that secret time. Damn, man, I need to know what's up with that. Let me see something. I ain't even gonna lie. That shit sound too Swag star on the track. You know what? I don't believe it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Hell no, nah, Nino don't make beats. <laughs> <laughs> Nino be uh spin. I don't be no beats. motherfucking making beats. I leave that the sizzle shit. I call that nigga um Nino Pacino. Yeah, that's his new name right there. Yeah. Or oh, you can call him Nino Cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Sizzlina gonna jump on the track together. Yeah, man, Sizzlina. You know I got that double cup pull me up, Sizzlina. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Sizzlina? I don't know what he talking about, Speedy. You tripping. <laughs> 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 Speedy, you tripping. I don't know what he talking about, Speedy. You tripping again. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that shit, man. Southside on the track. Rolling. Go stupid. Don't tell that nigga that shit. That hey, nigga gonna think he's the illest motherfucker alive. Hey, no. you made the beat, my nigga. I did. Me and Lex. Shout out to Lex Lewis. Nine o'clock, me and DJ Speedy and, and, the, and the rest of the fans, we're gonna get back on this motherfucker. We're gonna turn up. We're gonna tweet. We're gonna go crazy. We're gonna try to get a lot more, a lot more people to view this shit. And we're gonna write niggas beats. So yeah, we're gonna write everybody, niggas beats. everybody, go tweet everybody you know who made beats and who fuck with this beat shit, and tell them to come to my U screen at nine o'clock, and we're gonna get this shit popping. You feel me? All right, I tweet it. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Peace, King. Look, I played that too. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. And they said that shit was crazy. And look, number two. Hold on. Well, all right. But look, that's an 808 Mafia cat right there. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? That's what my niggas got to offer right there. You feel me? I'm, I'm, I'm going to play a different one of my niggas shit tomorrow. And that's not even my shit. That's the crazy shit. I ain't help them niggas with shit or nothing. Them niggas doing that shit by themselves. You feel me? 
It's 808 Mafia Die. Fuck with us, nigga. We out of here. We gone. It's over with. Follow me on Twitter, Sizzle 808 Mafia. S I Z Z L E 808 Mafia. Follow Bebop Beats Crazy at Twitter. It's the youngest cat at 808 Mafia right here, little bro. Bebop Beats Crazy. Checking out. Speedy at DJ Speedy GA, man. Fuck with us. Miss Entertainment, Auntie, how you doing? What's up, baby? BSM for life. I'm out of here. I'm gone. 808 Mafia TV. 808 Mafia TV. Yo, y'all already know who it is. Y'all already know what it is. Your boy DJ Speedy, man. Come follow me on Twitter at DJ Speedy GA. And y'all already know what it is. 808 Mafia. At OA Mafia, man, this Bebop Beats Crazy. At Bebop Beats Crazy on Twitter. The youngest, I'm talking about the youngest in charge. This is some real young nigga shit. See, I'm 10 years old, still in high school. You know what I'm saying? He going hard, he getting ready to graduate, he doing his thing. I let him be boss. Shout out to 808 Mafia. Shout out to Big Bro. Shout out to Big Bro Speedy. Should we do this, man? We work. We work hard. 808 what? Mafia, hold on, bring that motherfucker that way, hold on, hold on, it's 808 Mafia, die, nigga, I'm 22 right here buying a motherfucking Rolex that calls it your motherfucking car calls, nigga, 22 years old, I could buy your bitch a motherfucking house if she fought it, you feel me, that's how we kicking it, nigga, 808 Mafia, die. 808 Mafia, we out. 808 Mafia. Right, Still the 808 Mafia. 808 Mafia TV, man. We were turned up today. I'm talking about, I did some shit like told totally all the folks. I was just sitting here on U Strain talking to people and shit. So I did some shit. I was like, man, just send me some beats. And I'm going to play. I'm just going to pick any beats and I'm just going to play them. You know what I'm saying? So the U Strain was popping. I was playing everybody else's beats. I made a few beats on here today. Appreciate y'all for fucking with me. Log in on the YouTube channel, 808 Mafia TV. Follow me on Twitter at Sizzle 808 Mafia. Fuck with us, man. And I'm Papa 808. <laughs> This the OG Speedy, man. Follow him on Twitter, at DJ Speedy GA, man. You feel me? We got a facility, not a studio. This is a facility. You can get your body right. You can get your dance moves right. You can get your you can get your rap game right. You can get your show game right. You can, you can get, get your, your basketball rooster game neck. right. You get the rooster neck right. The rooster neck is, is got to be right. It's just coming. You feel me? We ain't even going to talk about that. That's out of here. Shout out to Walker Flock. Shout out to Auntie. Shout out to Woody Kid. Shout out to Slim Duncan. Shout out to BSM. Shout out to YG Hootie. Shout out to VA. Shout out to God Lee. Shout out to Nino Coates. Fuck with me. Sizzle 808 Mafia. We gone, nigga. They sell uh, weed brownies and, and cush joints and coffee, sway bucks. <laughs> Come fuck with me. Who's a Grammy? What Grammy? Boy, what Grammy you talking about, boy? Hey, somebody get that nigga on the phone. Who, Metro? I ain't got Metro number. I ain't got that phone. Yo, VA, you got his number? Metro. Hey, hey Metro, you got Nino number? Yo, Metro, call his number. 44423. Four, 9529. Call me right now, bro. I watch the throne is nominated. Oh, I'm going to get a Grammy for that shit if that shit win. Right, Speedy? Mm -hmm. Ooh! Fuck you, motherfuckers. You to to hold on, hold on, bro. Boy, I met y'all. What the hell you talking about with some Grammys, boy? Is it album of the year? But it's me right here, bro. What's up with it? Let me catch your phone, bro. I'm going to call you right, right back. Oh, but hold on, get this phone. But let me get that. Woo! Sizzle, what's my motherfucking name? Bro, if we win a Grammy, my nigga at 20 and 22, Speedy. Yeah. My price just went up. <laughs> Speedy, how much can I charge with a Grammy? Man, motherfucker will pay. Want to pay? Call me back. You know, people can spend $100,000, $200,000. No more. Damn, that shit. I wish I would have been older. Shit, I'd probably motherfucker well, uh, 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 he paid 150 for, uh, what's the name to do that fucking, uh, good, good feeling, me? Go around, dude. Yeah, I did, I did that, um, that see the tank. Damn, man, I need to know what's up with that. Let me see something. I ain't even gonna lie. That shit sound too Swag fine. star on the track. You know what? Let me see something. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know what that 
I don't believe it's a miracle. Hell no, nah, Nino don't make beats. <laughs> <laughs> Nino be uh spin. I don't be no beats. motherfucking making beats. I leave that the sizzle shit. I call that nigga um Nino Pacino. Yeah, that's his new name right there. Yeah. Or oh, you can call him Nino Cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Sizzlina gonna jump on the track together. Yeah, man, Sizzlina. You know I got that double cup pull me up, Sizzlina. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Sizzlina. I don't know what he talking about, Speedy. You tripping. <laughs> 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 Speedy got the sweet right here. I don't know what he talking about, Speedy. You tripping again. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that shit, man. South side on the track. Rolling. Go stupid. Don't tell that nigga that shit. That hey, nigga man. gonna think he's the illest motherfucker alive. Hey, no. you made the beat, my nigga. I did. Me and Lex. Shout out to Lex Lewis. It is go, I go. <laughs> Let me know. Hey, we good. We we ready to go. So, all right. All right. Mic check, mic check, mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two. Hey, one, surprise, strain. Strain. Yeah. Yeah. Had to turn that down. Turn that down. All right, guys. So, you already know the scope, the grand scheme of things. Turn my music on. <laughs> my boy over here jacking me. So we got a pretty good show. Uh, let me see here. I'm talking about, uh, we're gonna talk about, you know, who really started this trap shit, and, and, and you know, a whole bunch of music stuff. So we got a special guest today. Uh, the special guest is DJ Speedy in the building. <laughs> My Pirate Bay thing is still up here. So I'm going to give a shout out to everybody, of course, real quick. Apex, Apex the original, the original, was, original good. was good. Nino Beast Nino was Beast going on. on. Tony Crow Tony was, good. was good. DJ, DJ on TV on was going on. Crest he was good. Mean Gene was going on. Sep T was good. SS Brawley was going on. Tony Crow. PA on the track. Clap Maddox was good. Frazier. Frazier. So, all right, let's go ahead and get drop this music, man. This music ain't this this ain't this ain't what's popping right now. What's really popping is uh, my partner over here. Oh shit, I don't lost connection. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Come on, hell no. <laughs> that, that's what your that's what your ass get. No, I had took the wrong goddamn. I was trying to open my motherfucking uh my my uh, Ableton. And I put the fucking goddamn Google shit on the side of it. That is what <laughs> your ass get, back here. Good thing about it, everything still hooked up. Good thing I closed it had closed out and everything hooked, came back back on. Boom, boom, boom. Everything's everything on default. How so, about that? So tell uh, everybody uh, you know, who you are, introduce yourself and you know, the things that uh, you have done. It's gonna yo, be a so, minute. So I am um I am DJ Speedy. Well, Harvey Miller, my real name, DJ Speedy, is my alias. Harvard, South Carolina. And moved to Georgia. I mean, uh, since 2000, I've been in Georgia. Living here. All right, you, you've you been living here. You don't done stuff with, you know, oh, what yeah, you well, stuff with well, Young Jeezy. I do right, this. My bad, my bad. I remember let when me, you cracked the streets with that and you was talking shit in your tie hole with the rims and shit. Hold on, let me talk. Let, let, let me let me let me walk back. Let me get my industry on. Let me get, let me get that let me get that person that 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 real motherfucker. Hey, I'm DJ Speedy. Speedy, you a fool for this one. Y'all know Gigi say that shit. So you know I done produced for Goody Mob, Outcast, Beyonce, Gucci, Waka, fucking Jay Z, for uh, woo. You you don't, you don't did it all basically. Yeah, it's still going uh, for for the last thirty three years. Thirty three years. I'm when Gigi says Speedy, you a fool for this when I do this shit second album first single. So I had thirty placements way before I even knew who Jeezy was. That's a run for them. But anyway, but uh, yeah, that's me, Speedy. So you really honestly came up with the the topic here 
And I thought it was very interesting because we probably might have to do a, a, a part two with uh, more of the gang. Like, we're going to have to uh, get Shotty Red up in here and, and make, <laughs> make him step. Hey, that's my part. That's my part. Actually, shit. I was about to say, I got to call him on nothing. Shit. He, you know, he'll, he'll jump on the talk shit all day. Like, you know, he going to roast the whole, he going to roast and talk shit. You know what it is. Hey, we got we to set that on up because we got to make sure he, he don't have too many to drink. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, he, 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 I'd be like, uh-oh. Disclaimer. He's, he's going to let, let you have it. Shit, sober. Sober. <laughs> Red ain't, oh, ain't no joke, man. On that on that sauce? Oh, shit. Yeah, that's double that. I got to put my headphones right over here. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so uh, you might turn up your mic just a tad bit more, if you don't mind. Okay. I turn him up. Hold on. Yeah, I, it's, it sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Just better? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to That's great. All righty now. Universal Audio in the building. But yeah, <laughs> when we was talking about uh, like who invented trap and stuff like that and and all that stuff, it was, it was a pretty good conversation. I think a lot of people get, they have their, because I've seen people in the um, chat already, like they were saying, um, you got to talk about uh, uh, triple six, and well, that's not okay. That's not trap music, right? It, it could it could fit into the category. I mean, you know, what I'm well, saying all respect to the Memphis. Well, everybody forgetting about crunk music, right? That's what that's what Paul said. That's what Paul told told the homie. You know, you know. Damn, I can't think of his name. Beehive. Be, he told Beehive that. Just like booty shake, Luke and them, um, but. Miami, technically, Rick Ross technically does booty trap. Booty trap? <laughs> no. Come on. Hell no. <laughs> he, he coming in hot too early, bro. You coming <laughs> in hot too early. That's, that's and we got to see but, these but, niggas too. <laughs> no, Rick, because Rick Ross, this is the, my opinion. I don't really get too many of these. This is his opinion. Right. Because Rick Ross is from Florida. Right. But he can rap like a motherfucker. No doubt. And he uses trap beats. He used trap I'm producers. broke, nigga. I'm broke. Ain't away mafias and all them little did shit for him, for him. Like he uses trap producers, but however, he got sprinkles of Justice League. He got sprinkles of fucking Just Blaze. He got he got he got everybody on there. So he actually is a mixture of a lot of people's sound. However, Flo Rider. Mm-hmm. Flow Rider, and this is fact. Flow Rider is four on the floor. To See, a certain extent, it, uh, he reminds me of like all the good, the good old fashioned shit that we used to rock with in Atlanta and shit like that. Like the whole, uh, what you, what are you, the so so death base all stars, you know. Eh, but Mike Karen over there gives him, gives him like samples, like ninety nine percent of his shit is samples. Flipped and redone into songs like uh, I mean I I, I know Flora real real well like from the from the from the get beginning right. Everything I'm gonna talk about from now is gonna be facts shit, shit facts I know facts I've been only. There. I've done it. <laughs> I've been there. Right. So I mean, yeah. So so we was talking about that. Uh, I I did mention you know, in my original. A video where I talked about the history of trap music. I put Memphis in there because like the whole kind of DNA came from like New York City with the with the show boys, lock them in the trunk, drag rap. And you know, uh -huh. that record has been sampled so much, you know what I'm saying? And so it's pretty much uh uh if we talk about Southern hip hop altogether, that's pretty much the DNA of where where that kind of format came from. But okay. trap, you was talking about who did you say was the first person you heard say trap, especially on a record? So how how you want me to start this whole this whole question? Okay, what the question you asking me right. is who the first person you heard say trap? Right. Kujo Goody, Goody Mob. Right. Kujo Goody said it on Goody Mob song. Um, I want to say uh, on oh, Outcast uh, uh, first album, the Southern Playlistic. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I want I forgot what the song it was, but Kujo says something in the trap. Blah blah blah. But the word trap and music together is T.I. Right. That's the first time I heard uh, like those, them put together. Those artists you, we, we are saying, mm -hmm. the trap 
sound mm -hmm. that makes those guys want to rap on those beats. Trap sound is Shorty Red. He was 14 years old when he made Left Right Left for Drama. Drama was a trap boy, a trap artist turned rapper. <laughs> Red with platinum on that at 14 years old in hip hop. He's the youngest hip hop producer, super producer, meaning going to platinum ever. Jermaine Dupri was 15, but Jermaine Dupri didn't do hip hop. He got he went platinum on R and B and pop shit. Well, well, technically, Kim. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna say Kim played crisscross. Crisscross, crisscross. But I talk about the first time he went platinum. See, you getting, you getting. That's the first Chris Cross's first artist on his label. Mm -hmm. The first time he went platinum as a producer wasn't that. Mm -hmm. He had he found it left eye was left eye just lived with him. He's he found the left eye. He was his daddy's Michael Mal Malden. Like his daddy, he been making beats. He was he used to be on the road with fucking um cool uh, uh um not cool uh not cool Mo D. Somebody brought up Bone Crusher. Damn. Houdini. Houdini. He used to right, be. Right, right, right. Bone Crusher is crump music. We come on now. It, 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 this listen, I'm telling you, because I tell I'm telling you. I ain't I ask no opinion. I'm telling these folks. Listen. So, Shorty Red. Shorty Red is the first platinum producer in 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 and he did trap music with the 808. He's the first person. That I knew, fuck, even used the word 808. Shorty mm -hmm. Red. Then you got Toomp. Because Toomp and TI. But technically, let's, let's go back. Shorty Red found Jeezy. Jeezy was little J from Macon, Georgia. Right. Four four soldiers. Fucking, you got uh 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 Shorty Red and this so much shit. Uh, what's the, what's the, uh, the, 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 the walk movie like with the soldier? Walk like a soldier. You walk, that's, that's, that's late on. Yeah, but even that, Bree and them niggas, that was trap niggas. That was way, that was way before fucking, uh, Jeezy. If we could talk about Ghetto Mafia, I mean, damn. Like, that, it, that isn't the sound that everybody is loving now, but. Well, let's go back to this 808 trap music shit, though. Okay. Okay. So, Shardy Red, NPC. I was in South Carolina still. Mm -hmm. I was a radio. I, I was a radio DJ. I had the number one show in the market. That's how I met Outkast in 1995. I met Shorty Red. I met Nelly in 99. I was producing, but I wasn't, I was learning. I was in the process. When I met Shorty Red, me and Shorty Red became real cool. And that's my friend to the day. Yeah, that's gang. So the, his drum sounds, Cause I'm gonna skip a part. Uh -oh. His <laughs> oh, 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 no. it's, it's true. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. Hey, go ahead. Okay, so when I moved to Atlanta, I lived down the street from Gucci, Redrick Davis. Mm -hmm. Gina, a friend of mine from Savannah, homegirl. Shout out to Gina. Introduced me to fucking Gucci. Gucci bought Walker, cause Walker is a rolling. Walker wasn't rapping none of that shit. Walker bought Southside and Lex. They was working with Fruity Loops. Speed. <laughs> oh, okay. Put my boys up with some sounds, man. Get my boys right, man. I gave them a nice little goddamn beat packs that y'all try to goddamn give the people now. Mm -hmm. Beat packs. But my beat packs consist of shorty red sounds, organized noise sounds. It was all kind of shit. They gravitated to the shorty red 808 goddamn sound pack. Mm. It is what it is. <laughs> they was young. They weren't even no placements, no trying trying to learn through loops. And see, I I leave I leave right there. <laughs> that, goes, that, goes, that goes into a whole nother, you know, what I'm saying a whole nother can of worms. A, a, a whole different paradigm of, of trap and and sound and and inspiration and and all, all right. kinds of behind the uh, scenes shit. So, uh, but the. Uh, Lex, 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 and, and, and Southside, they turn, they turn 808, they turn 808 uh, uh, music that sound up a little more than us older niggas. Right. They turned it up a little more for the younger folk. They brought it to the young people, which Walker. 
which is which a good thing, which, which is a very good thing. Should get the credit for that. Yeah. Because what Walker did and T.I. and Jeezy did are two different things. Yeah. See, trap music and 808 sound is two different things. Trap, listen, Walker ain't do trap music. Walker was a wild boy, man. He just, <laughs> he just got I on the mic and he was just wild. Walker got drill music. Walker, Walker had drill music, fight music, whatever fucking all that shit. He took, it's like he took trap and motherfucker crump and mix it together. Right, he Walker is just like I don't know. He was just on uh, all his own. He had a different level of energy around the, around the same time as like uh, Mike Will, because we was talking about Mike Will too as well. Show another, show, that's a whole another, that's a whole another ball game too. But show me a um, show me another Walker. I can show you a lot of little Wayne's and a lot of goddamn little Wayne thug. I can show you that. Show me another Walker. Now that Chicago was close to doing Walker. Um, what's the boy name? I was about to say, uh, uh, Sosa. Um, yeah, yeah, he was close, but that's called drill music, mm -hmm. and it wasn't from here. It was inspired by. It. Now, this is facts. Everything I'm saying, you can Google it. Shorty Red went platinum at 14 with Drama Left Right Left with the 808 sound from with the trap artist and he found young Jeezy Lil J for making Georgia. What was I was I junior in high school or what I know I'm uh channeling boomer energy. I remember T.I. shout out to Till T.I. used to come around the dungeon, got down with KP, KP for Kawar Listen, listen. Mm -hmm. KP Toon and T.I. when trap music the words together yes that name trap music that trap music sound eh. Eh. so so when you say and eh, what, what does that really mean though the sound, the sound is shorty red because i mean like like 808 like 808 mafia i see i see shorty i mean um south side put out a take i invented trap or something to, uh, like the little sound oh. pack oh oh yeah yeah, I, I, yeah that, I, I seen him on um complex or whatever did in, interviews and stuff. Like I be, I see, I see little things, but that, I'm a grown ass man. I like they're all that uh, actually petty shit, and then all those my my boys, those all my people, that's my fam. Like so, at the end of the day, like I just I watch and listen, but they know, and I know the truth. Now who got the ball? See, see, you know, you know, uh, Southside got them. Southside got there, cocky with the cocky with that shit too. Now, you know that gang, gang, gang shit. So you know, yeah, he he he's a true Southside nigga. Like that's that's one hundred percent. Like the right name and all that shit. But but, but all me, ATL niggas got good hearts at the end of the day. But me being being the old dude, I be try. I used, you know, saying back in the day, I should try to show them how to produce music world over overall, like overall produce mm -hmm. like writing and pop music and this, but they just want to do, hey, they just want to do Fruit Loop Trap. Hey. <laughs> I believe that alone, man. Somebody was yeah. talking about Crime Mob in the chat. Damn. That, that, God damn. Music, man. That's Lil John. You can't take that from Lil John. That's Take, Lil John. Yeah, because that, cause that definitely was, um, oh, damn, Lil John. I can't forget it. If I, man, if I run into Scrappy, uh, Lil Scrappy, uh, that Lil was his, Lil J. And he, he had uh he had found that group right now that's a that's a nice little thing little john and triple six mafia now i mean i mean you brought that up right now they i mean google paul, this they can google this. i mean dj I, paul said out of his own mouth that he did he does on. not do trap music hold on go ahead i did a song with triple six mafia it's called what the business is featuring gip ali uh uh and on um, Juicy J, back in the days, mm -hmm. I had already made the beat, and I was so happy to got them. Juicy, uh, Juicy and Paul was come uh, fuck with me. Got them. I said, man, come and add something to the beat. Got them. They were like, dog, that shit already got them here. Now I just let me just rap. <laughs> shit, I was trying to get them to got them collab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you like, nigga, that shit is already jammed. So you know, hanging with them all the time, like, like, so, so you know. As you know, Goody Mob, Outcast, everybody's come. I'm talking about 
Shout yeah. out to Bun B, uh, all of uh, Pimp C, yeah. Bun B. Yeah, yeah. They, they, was just, they was staying in College Park when they did uh, uh, Ryan Dirty. I, I was fortunate enough in my music career that everybody I produced for, I actually hanged out with and produced in the studio with them and kick it with them to this day. Oh, that's just different now. That's just really different now. Hell, right, niggas is point. making albums. Niggas is making albums with artists that they never met that are dead and, and got pride for that shit. And, right. And, uh, and, and they're counting their uh, their clout tokens from that shit. That's kind of like a. It's it's different. It hits different these days. Like, L- listen, I met Gucci, and Gucci just stay at my house, the same house I'm in right now. Right. But like, I got hundreds of songs with Gucci Walker. You name it. I remember Miss Dale Bart, Nicki, Nicki Minaj over here. I, I, I remember fucking uh, French Montana, OJ Juice Man. Shout out to OJ. I did, I did, you know, I did a lot of stuff for OJ too. Like all oh, that whole fucking, all that so icy camp. The fucking Miss Dale and them over there, Miss A Entertainment. All, all that, all that speedy. I, I just ain't put my drop on everything. I was signed to Jeezy. I was signed to Jeezy for two years. Right. I was still Gucci friend. So I couldn't let Jeezy know that I'm still hanging with Gucci until Gucci was like, fuck that shit, fuck that shit, God damn it, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Man, that's, my, that's my nigga Gucci. But you gotta understand, Waka had Southside and Lex. Southside and Lex was introduced to me. I built a whole facility, run and shoot. I turned it into a fucking studio, uh, fucking rehearsal hall, all that. That's, that's when Thug and- Y'all, fucking, y'all killed my hoop spot. <laughs> <y'all>, <laughs> nah, I been stop hooping uh, when uh, run and shoot went out. Yep. Yep, uh, Thug, Jacquees, all that stuff came from over there. Like, it's it's so it's so much. I mean, that's just crazy, man. I remember, I remember when Young Thug had uh, had uh, messaged me like way before the I'm a Stoner and all that shit, and it, it was just at a, such a bad time, man. That's why you should. That's why I tell everybody, man, don't give up on that shit. If you so if you homeless ask, nigga ask, find ask, the studio, ask, let me ask you and, and y'all people some questions. What kind of music is Young Thug's music? Then, is it trap? I mean, my my opinion, I, w- I would definitely put it in the trap category. But he again, he's kind of metamorphosized that then? vibe. So, what is Lil Wayne? Uh, I don't know. I would say I would say Southern hip hop. Ding ding ding. So you would put Southern hip hop as Outkast, mm-hmm. Goody Mob, mm-hmm. Lil Wayne, Cash Money, Three Six, Three Six. So when does the trap kick in? Jeezy, T.I., Gucci. Mm-hmm. Who else? Uh, Migos. Migo, Migos. But, okay, stop at Migos. Mm-hmm. Isn't Migos Crucial Conflict or Do or Die? Isn't, 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 that's, that's the whole nother. The whole triplet flow type vibe? Yes. And I still had to come back to 3-6 and, uh, and Bone yeah. Thugs. Yes, Bone Thugs, yes. All that. So we got a good listen. Everybody got the good idea. It's so so many people who who successful with it know how to execute it. Take it from the old and making it new. Everything does everything. They some people say is is. I, is I guess new. we do for real. We for real forgot about no limit though. I can't I can't do P like yeah. that. I gotta <laughs> I gotta face I gotta face all the New Orleans niggas all the time. So. <laughs> So would, would Ice Cream Man from, from Master P, would that be a trap? Since you're talking about dope? I mean, technically. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta understand, break down the word trap. The word trap came from the trap spot where you're selling dope at. Right, like, the, 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 the bluff. It's places like the bluff. Everybody got a trap. Right. Everybody has a hood. Everybody got a fuck, every city, every, everybody got one. It just so happened that the, the the phrase, the term, trap, and music got put together on Ti, which had beats. But did Ti have trap music tracks back then? No. Toomp did music. Toomp did music. Right, right, right. He just used eight oh eights with the MPC. Like Toomp, shout out to Toomp, the MPC. However, again, the word trap and music together. It's Ti. Yeah, I mean, he definitely coined that. He he said, word, he, said the the tra- he said the trademark that shit as soon as he as soon as it came out of his mouth. So- the phrase, the phrase, trap music, the sound, and 
produ from producing side to the sound, shit, you gotta give it to Shorty Ray. Yeah. Facts. Like, and everything he touched prior to it, and T.I. and after that. He created Jeezy. That's why Jeezy was like, Jeezy and T.I. are real, real close friends. So Jeezy's like, man, I, you can have it. shit. You can have it going, but eh, you go back to Lil' J. Eh, that's before T.I. Yeah, but I mean, the Lil' J album had a lot of, uh, well, he had got the, I think it was called Do The Damn Thing, and it was produced Shot by uh, Lil' John. Shot a Red, Shot a Red, followed Jeezy. That was, Jeezy was his artist. Yeah. But he had to he had to joint with Little John on that album though. Yeah, yeah, but cause John, look, John, me, John, all his friends, all the still friends of the day, all us used to hang out together, swap sounds. That's how that's how that's how George. That's, that's why we still we, our family. We family like that, just like me and you on on the on this podcast together. Like, that's how Georgia is. We oh, not New York. Roger, <laughs> Roger just uh, hit me with a text. He said, "You gonna leave David Banner out like that? Nah, man, we ain't gonna leave him." As far as like the side, he was just talking about some shit. Yes, but shot rubber band man came later. It, it was on trap music though. D David Banner came later. If you talk about the producing side, uh, what are you talking about? Like being on somebody? Because that case with Lil, where Lil C at? Where Lil C? Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, yep, yep, yep. Wah, 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 wah. You know his little drop just be the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, come on now. I, it's a lot of people that leaving out. Actually, in in the history of things, K, what Ke at? He on the track. Yeah, Ke did. Uh, K, he, K, he did he's too busy Buffalo scamming Wild. niggas on YouTube. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, just, I'm just playing. <laughs> no. I'm just playing. Ke, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Yeah, like so. <laughs> Oh, oh, for 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 those, yeah, I'm I am 44 years old. Like I I'm I'm speaking knowledge. I'm two years older than hip hop. Yeah, that way. <laughs> it's all good. We yeah, but we all boomers in here. You, I got no, more gray hairs than everybody in this bitch. No, no, I'm saying that I'm saying that for the for the simple fact of why Georgia once we got the ring ring and we still got it so long. Why why we why we still because we embrace people. I came from South Carolina. They, mm -hmm. they met me in South Carolina on a radio show where I was doing something for them. I, I just became friends with them and then exercise. See, that's another thing. People want to know how to get placements, right? I know, I know you said that all oh, you want me to wait oh, for yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody just hit me about that uh, on Twitter. It was talking about how you get your placements and stuff like that. We are the placements. Basically. Everybody, producers, beat makers, whoever the fuck you are, DJs, we are the placements. Want to know why? The most the the most important person in the music industry is an engineer. Mm -hmm. Nothing get played, nothing get recorded, nothing get mixed, nothing get done without an engineer. Renegade, shout out to Renegade. Engineer starts there, but after the engineer, what you need? Music, the beats. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's called supply and demand. If you got dope shit and somebody know you got dope shit, they're gonna contact you for your dope shit. Hey, you you know what's funny about that, dog? Like I just like just from jumping back into the studios and stuff like that. A lot of engineers they reach out and the first thing they do, like man, uh, such such in here. Yeah, and, and you need to track. <laughs> you know. I remember the other day he was like, man, tip over here in the studio, man, and he, he talking about man, tell me, to, tell me to send me some beat, man, goddamn, because they, they beat somebody sent me whack. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That engineer knew. How they get in contact with me? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm telling you, bro. Like I, w we was just talking about, like, man, like I had did a video a few days ago about, uh, oh, like this cat that had uh, sent some samples to another producer or whatnot, and then now he's posing and the issue as in the homie stole the samples, and I'm like, bro, like get your get your facts straight. Like you just said on IG. It's on unless he, he, you know, you can edit shit, but it's too late now. I already screen uh, captured it. I said you just said that you was uh, fucking with homie first, and then he, uh, uh, the 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 whole entire thing is basically uh, the big producer. He got the he got the placement. But hold on, all right. I, I watched I watched that show. I watched that uh, your episode you had put up there. 
Mm-hmm. But check this out. You're missing a key thing on the episode. You said he replayed it. He mm-hmm. said he did, made his track over. Right? That that was the claim by uh the the uh, the, the listen, producer. Listen, listen closely. He made it over. Mm-hmm. That's uh, listen. They do that all the damn time. Make somebody. I make said it over. that. <laughs> I said that. Uh, making somebody track over is never gonna sound like yours because they don't have the same sounds. You can make it over, it's gonna sound close to it, but it's never gonna sound the same. They're not gonna EQ the same, but they're not gonna, it's not gonna be the same. And we're not gonna make it the same. We're gonna use it as an idea to make our own shit because most producers, if you if you like me, if somebody asks me to make some shit over, yeah, but I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna add my twist so it don't sound like the motherfucker, other motherfucker shit. But, but it, hold it right there because we was just talking about how uh, there was a joint that you had did with Big Gip, right? Right and, right, and and you found out that you told him to play like a riff of Billy Jean, but break up the riff, right? I tell you, I tell you, I tell you the story. So, my first placement as DJ Speedy was stepping out from Big Gill, mm-hmm. where I had a session guitarist came in to play with me. I paid seven hundred dollars session fee for him to sit there and wait till I tell him what to fucking play for the day. So I say, man, play Billy Jean over. Mm-hmm. But skip this note, that note, this, this, this note. It sounds just like Billie Jean. Mm-hmm. I think it's Billie Jean, but it ain't Billie Jean because I skipped notes. However, I didn't sample it. Right. So the late, so when the step and I came out, the labels made me sign this piece of paper saying that I'm responsible. Blah 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 blah. They held my money for a year. Mm-hmm. Thought Michael Jackson was gonna sue me. He was alive now. He thought Michael Jackson was gonna sue me. Well, he didn't. Now you can go. Google stepping out, it's going to come up similarities. It's going to come up that this shit, uh, sample genes or whatever shit that, that shit called. It's going to come out like, oh, it's sound like Billie Jean. But Hall and Notes got approached by Michael Jackson <laughs> before me. Hall and Notes told a story about how Michael Jackson came to them and said, hey, mm-hmm, sorry guys, I stole, I stole your goddamn, your, your, your baseline from goddamn, uh, uh, I can't go for that for my Billie Jean. And it was like, huh? What you talking about? Man, I took your baseline. I had my guitar player play the bass line over, and it's on Billie Jean. Yeah. It's, it's a hit. It was like, so we went back and listened, kind of find out it's the same bass line. Same thing I did. And and then there's some more <laughs> crazy sample, shit. We didn't sample the master, though. Had it played over. Now, they took it from some goddamn body else. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that a hey. bitch? They call it inspired by, because technically music theory, it's been done over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Melodies are infinite, but music and chords and drum, drum rudiments, you can't never own that shit. You can't own sound. Fuck y'all talking about, you can't own no fucking sound. But sound and melodies together make a song. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. To get you got song copyright. You ain't never got no beat copyright until now. N- now you do. Hold, now, now you. I don't know if you want to go into that about the music monetization and the shit that Kanye did. With, you know what I'm saying? We did oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. We definitely need to talk about that. The, uh, the monetization yeah. act because See, we were talking about uh, could you copyright a beat theoretically, and you said no, and I thought you, that shit was crazy. You couldn't. But I t- actually also told you how. Theoretically, you still could have did that back in the days if you knew about it. But yeah, if you now, had logic, because because you you can write sheet music easily right. while you make your beats. That's the thing about logic. Because see, here's what people get fucked up at. Back in the days, we had CDs, and you could look at the credits. Mm-hmm. Where it's written by, written by don't always mean. See, this is how this is separate the, your money because I'm a composer producer that makes beats and engineers and DJs. Mm-hmm. I write music. Now, some people make beats only. I make beats that, and I write the music, meaning the way you speak of it is how you get paid from it. I score movies. Right. I write the music for the music score. Well, I score artists. I write the music to the beats that they're using. I can copyright that because that's in a tangible form and it's written. 
audio, they got an SR phone, which is called sound recording. Mm -hmm. Sound recording or sound recording, the same fucking thing. Pro 2 session or whatever. It's, you recorded it. it. It got a metadata, it, all that. Yeah. But that's don't hold up in court. You ever heard this word called, you ever heard this thing, thing say possession is nine tenths of the law? Mm -hmm. I heard that before. He who has the session is the winner. You might, you made it a hot line, I made it a hot song. Jay Z. You made a hot goddamn loop sample, I turned it to a hot ass song. Because you couldn't, you can't copyright that damn sample. Only thing you can do is say, man, I had that, I made that sample. Prove it. Sue me. They, they want you to talk about the Marvin. Oh, yeah, because we was just talking about the Marvin Gaye uh, uh, yeah. incident about so, uh, with Pharrell and, and how it worked. To, shout out to Pharrell and, and Robert Thicke, them people. Listen, so Pharrell clearly was inspired by Marvin Gaye's song and made that beat. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was obvious. And, but he wrote the song mm -hmm. because he wrote it too. He wrote the song and Robert Dick sung it. The melody was not like the beat. Absolutely. How, how, it's an appeal right now. Like, they ain't won yet, it's an appeal. Pharrell ain't paid, they ain't paid him shit. But, but why Why did they I, win that I, case though? Cause I didn't I'm even broke, know. Nigga, I'm broke. I'm they opening won. a restaurant on August 1st, fam. A. Oh, oh my bad. <laughs> I uh, appreciate that donation. Uh, Congrats. 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 Listen, everybody, they won the case at that particular point in time because Robert Thicke and Pharrell did not show up to the fucking court hearing, and the judge automatically ruled in the other, in, the, in the Marvin Gaye's family in favor. That's why they didn't pay them shit. They ain't shit. They ain't won shit because if Pharrell and them lose that, I'm coming to sue all y'all motherfuckers. How about <laughs> That's crazy. Easy. How you not show up for? Because they probably was like, man, that shit gonna no, go on. Man, they, man it, it's it's a whole bunch of bullshit. You know how motherfuckers be like, oh, court, court tomorrow. Right, 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 right. You know, the attorneys and everybody puts uh, puts that uh, happen. Because that's why. So what they do is they give cases. They give cases of uh, that happens before to use in defense of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, for real, I, I shared my, I shared my situation with the Michael Jackson thing. And I also had a couple of other situations where that way I won. And clearly, clearly they, 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 you can't do that. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. Now, if they would have sampled the master and made a beat out of it, then that's different. However, if he would have sung the melody over too, that's interpolation. That's only publishing. That's only publishing. The master entitles a, a, a sample clearance fee and all, all that other shit. Publishing comes from. Remember, I told you a story about CeeLo when I made when I did the uh, Ross Stewart. Right. I sung. I wrote the hook like I wrote the hook, which basically it was nobody shit. And then CeeLo sung it over like Ross Stewart. Ross Stewart interpolation came. It took eighty percent of the publishing. It wasn't no sample. Oh, then you know, you know that, that that lineage don't play. Like don't. Don't partially have those shit to sell like the Beatles. Don't have your shit sell like Sting. Don't have Rod Stewart. Don't fuck beat. with them. That's beat. why they got long money. But the beat was not no. It was original beat. He sung the hook over like Rod Stewart's song. I told you. I told you. I told you. Duh. He sung the hook over like Rod Stewart. Right. That's a whole nother ball game. I can't control. Listen, you can't control what the artist gonna say. Just like. And Nelly and um, in Grills, in Grills, Nelly used fucking uh, uh, I think it's like thirteen or fourteen different interpolation lines from from different artists. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the whole top, bottom, and the uh, row, all those different shit he was saying in his verses came from other fucking people. Uh, okay, like smile for me, daddy. What you looking? All that came from different people's song. That, that publishing got bust bust up so goddamn much. That's why on the writer credit said written by all kind of different people. No. In the writer's credit, once you sample somebody's shit, they get writer's credit too. Everybody think like, oh, so, so and so made a beat with you, or such person made a beat, this person made a beat, this person got them, uh, wrote these lyrics or whatever. In writer's credit, no, nigga. Writing credit comes from anything dealing with those songs. Mm. From the music side to the lyric side. It says written by, blah, 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 real name. Publishing companies, da, da, da. Now, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, 
there was something else we was talking about too that was kind of well, was kind of crazy and yeah it brought it to my attention and i was like what uh was it it was the home recording act right oh yeah talking about, so so you want to go into the, the different ways to get paid so actually i'm asking some of your followers out there like how many of y'all know how many ways it is to get paid from music? Because apparently they don't know because everybody try to run and try to do what somebody else doing all the time. They, they try it's to send people loops and loop packs <laughs> with uh, hidden uh, eulas and shit like that. Right. <laughs> hey, hell no. don't, don't feel bad though, because most people only know five, four, four for most five if you're good. But it's 22 different ways. 22. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Most people only know fucking five at the most. Shit, I, I you, you're being nice. I would say maybe two, because because all they trying to do is get the placement and have this shit, uh, have the the song come out so they can post it back on their IG. So they gonna, so that means that they gonna know about basically getting the advanced, Man, maybe Roy, a pub publishing. Not- at See everybody gets and performance the rights. Royalties, I three. The capital royalties and regular royalties, they get those mixed up. They keep they let the folk tell you something. Listen. But how many, how many need okay, this pandemic going on, everybody's not working. Da, da, da. Do you know anything you ever watched in life has music in it? Whether it's gonna be low or loud. Everything has music in it. Next time y'all look, watch TV and watch something, you're going to look at it differently. It got music in it. Now, who does the music for that shit? Me. <laughs> the music for the talk bears, the music for trailers, the music for all that shit. Boy, I sit here and got there, collect goddamn grip doing that shit. Because when everybody go left, I go right. Now, but that come from learning how to score. Learning how to engineer 7.1 surround sound. Learning, learning, learning my shit. They know I can do that shit, and I don't have no. I, I do it by myself. I don't have no fucking crew. I don't need. I, I do it all on alone. I mean, that's you don't not, even have to have like. That's the thing. It's like I see like so many other these new younger producers that ain't even burnt. They shouldn't be burnt out at fucking twenty something at least. I'm not even well, burnt out at thirty eight, but they like there's. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, brother. I'll tell you where that came from. Like, uh, so even working with other people, yes, we when when we work with other people, it's people we 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 rock with forever, like organized noise. But see, it was for a purpose. I was a DJ that had connections in that world to get music played. They were producers that had artists and da-da-da-da. So me working with organized noise, learning how to produce is a payment for me being able to be their homie and, and play their record. So it's a, it's a give and a curse. But however, they also produced music and it was able to help me advance. So it was something there for them. Two producers that knew trying to got them collab together. Shit, what's that gonna do with the music once you, once you get it done? That's why I see they try to collab with a, a producer that's on because they wanna do a beat with a producer that's on and hope that that producer is gonna shop it and help it get a placement quicker. Right. Hit that part, but when like, Salsa, but see, Salsa and Lex were friends that made beats together. See, that's a difference. That's why, that's where it really came from, the, all that crew, because they kept the same formula. The Salsa kept the same formula when he got, when he found, I mean, we found Metro, T, TM88, like all that shit, like, because that's the formula he had where his brother, like, got them up, uh, Lex, you know what I'm saying? Right. So they made, they did that together. And that was the Fruit Loop environment. However, the cool thing about it was, Southside was around people like us, where the people like Metro and everybody else could meet. Now, take Future for instance. Future, <laughs> shout out to Meathead. We call Meathead. we know him as Meathead. <laughs> you know, that's, little, that's little bro. That's that's Rico's ways. First cousin, he's Meathead to me. Second generation, Dungeon Family. The connection is like. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's the beauty of Atlanta, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? The beauty of Atlanta, Georgia, and us old niggas. Everybody like the young, old yeah, niggas don't right. look out. Nah. Right, right. You don't even know the old niggas you need to talk to. Like I, I, I could pass so many people on social media and all kinds of shit. Just looking. You either, don't know me. Either way, we 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 don't disrespect our elders, dog. No, at, at all. And then everybody knows if you ask me anything. 
I will respond to it, but it's all how you ask and what you're asking for. Because I don't give a fuck. Like, you don't, I, walk, walk, triple F life. You ain't feed me, fucking me, or financing me? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> feed me, fuck me, or financing me? I don't give a fuck. And I'm really about that life. I'm about to go into some other shit now, though. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. let's not. <laughs> <laughs> let's not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. Like, I get the part when it's they got the listen. Everybody has the all the youngsters, old, old and young, because everybody trying to figure it out now. They got the right idea. Mm-hmm. Just got to be an executed. You got to be the executed. Like. Now, I think some of them are executing it better than others, but some of them are just kind of like blackmailing uh, the ones that's on, like the big the big producers that's on. Like, you see a lot of that. Like, the whole Cash Money AP with w- uh, Wilo. I mean, I, I get it. You know, he did his thing or whatever. And, you know, it, but it seemed like he was blackmailing them a bit, a bit. You know what I mean? So, check this out. Say, for instance, I'm Cash Money AP. Mm-hmm. That other guy, whatever. I don't know. You, I forgot. I don't know what to say. Right. And I never met you ever in life. Now, how can you prove that I took your beat? You got to be able to prove that I even heard your beat. Even took your shit. How can you prove that? Because a lot of people also try to claim people's shit because because they can and they know any discrepancy is going to stop people from goddamn getting paid from it. any discrepancy. But if you don't know enough information to even fucking have a warrant that, it, uh, fuck you, sue me. You feel me? So at, at that point, it got to be some validity to that that AP story because didn't you say that he put um they put the credits on? They end up come back to putting the credits on there or something? Uh, yeah, he ended up putting the credits on at least the IG story or whatnot to kind of right. take the heat he, off of him, I guess. So that's not even the first time this happened to him either. But that's so that means there's some kind of validity to the story. So that means he had some kind of interaction with that person to be able to send him something to her that he redid. Like it got to be some kind of information because you can't just say that. Oh, Speedy took my took my beat and I ain't never met you a day in my day in my month. Give me life. one second. I'm gonna let this dog out real quick. Okay. You, you understand go what I'm ahead. Saying? Go ahead. Yeah. So you got to be able to say something like that. Like you can't just say, oh, oh, that you took my beat. We got the same sounds. We use the same machine. We we, we use the same machine. Got the same sounds. The same beat that, but he took took the sound. Nigga, I make my, I make all my sounds. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. Well, the thing is, uh, with some of the, the some of the way that people are doing things is if you have uh, context, if you have a recent history with them, if you've been in the same room with them, or if y'all emailed each other, you know that that's that's all uh, a paper trail of some sorts. Uh, and that's a little. That's why it's a little easier to kind of. Uh, Put somebody put the pressure on somebody when they have that situation with the label and whatnot, and yeah, shit like that happens. So, so here's the scenario. Okay, I got a, I got a perfect story. Future, Dre three thousand and Organized Noise did a song called Benz Bitch, right? Mm-hmm. I told that bitch to get into something about the Benz hoe. Okay. I need to get that Connect album too. The uh, when they was all on when they was in the group and uh, now I remember just hearing. Uh, Meathead at the first time for the first time, aka Future, and I was like, "Damn, this dude's gonna be something for real, for real." Like they all was dope, but yeah. But go ahead, so, my bad. So the story about that song was organized noise did the beat. Mr. DJ, which is done our family too. Mr. DJ was Earth Tone Three, which used to make beats with with Dre and Big. No so doubt. Mr. DJ, shout out, shout out to uh, Cheeks, Mr. DJ had a bunch of records and went through and found a shitload of samples and made loops and samples and shit and gave it to Rico uh, from Organized North. Shout out to Rico, Rico Way. Gave Rico a, a loop pack years ago. Like, years ago. So Rico was going through trying to make the beat for Ben's bitch and he came across, the, he went in and got them the, the, the little goddamn pack and he got them about the sample, this loop, whoop, 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 and he used it. Mr. DJ Say, oh shit, Bimp, goddamn, I gave you the goddamn sample, goddamn. I need to get in on that. I need to goddamn whoop, whoop, whoop. Right, right, right. The big old little, that was the big old little dispute. That's family though. They, they, they got over it. But right. stuff like that. Like you feel you feel me? Shit like shit like that. 
causes rifts and shit too. But how do one deal with something like that? If I get, if you my partner and I gave you some goddamn samples, you are gonna use them differently than me. You might find that sample. I might have, I might have made, I might have found it, thought it was dope, and I never used it, and you used it, but didn't. So what's royalty free? When when something becomes royalty free, meaning I don't want nothing in return for this sample. Right. You, you feel me? I don't want nothing in return. I made these packs, and I'm so I so you bought the pack, or you I gave it to you. Whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll do what you do. Because you still got to get the placement. You still got to get it, make it work. Because he, Rico made the song, got to got Dre 3000 on it, got the future, you know what I'm saying, on it, blah, 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 and it's a song. So, other than that, it would have been on, you know, in a, in a computer, in a fucking hard drive for, forever. Nobody ever used it, bitch. Yeah, man, we a team anyways, dog. We, we got to keep everything in-house. And we if we're going to pass around samples and shit like that, dog, we got to know where them shits is. Like right, that that shit. That's why shit like that happens, man. Like homie, not, oh, homie yeah. passed him a sample. He probably said he did that shit, and it was a lie because right. cause he but picked not that only, bitch up. Not only that, not only that. If you turn me onto something and you made and you made, and you made me some money mm -hmm. by your connections, and I, and I vice versa, and we've been doing that forever. Why, if I gave you a bunch of samples that you that you that I totally forgot about to you to, 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 to I remember that I gave it to you, mm -hmm. and you turn it into a song. Okay. You made it a hot line. I made it a hot, hot song. song. Now, do you think that morally, loyally, uh, homie, homie, I supposed to say, "Oh, nigga, I need some goddamn pub on that shit," man? Because I, because perfect example. Let me tell you something. Everything is business, ain't shit personal, and that's a, that's something that my nigga Paul said. <laughs> you want me to hit, hit you with the uh, air horn? <laughs> nah. Some people, some people are built different. Right, right. Why? I got a homeboy, Mark. Okay. Shout out to Mark. Mark makes beats. Mark which with, with Saha the Prince. So Saha, Kanye, Mr. Bentley, and all of them was got there together one day. And I sent, I, it was like 2015 and 16. I sent a whole goddamn a pack of goddamn tracks and also sounds. Original loops, are re really original mm -hmm. loops and everything over to Saha's email. Uh, I think it was a couple of months ago, Mark uh, hit me like, yo, Speedy, I hope you don't goddamn kill me, man, but goddamn, um, Saha told me I could goddamn go through the little sound packs and whatever, because I was fucking around with some beats and shit, and, and I came up with a beat, and Big Crit want to use it, Crit uh, using it, and he want to put it on the album. Um, is it cool? And he like, how much publishing do you want? Da, 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 da. I'm like, dog, we good. Like, shit. First of all, I forgot about the shit. Mm -hmm. Secondly, secondly, I'm like, nigga, shit, spin it 50-50. I don't give a fuck. I'm saying, I'm, I'm just glad. <laughs> you know. I, I was even glad that you even called me. You ain't even had to call me and tell me about it. I forgot about the shit. Well, I mean, but, that's that's dope though. That that's because that's family, bro. A lot of these dudes don't be family. They just be reaching out to people, and, and you know that's cool to to shoot your shot. But and nah, no know, know where you're shooting your goddamn shot. He put it out. He put it out. Uh, what about three or four weeks ago? Uh, it's called "Gotta Get Over." Got get over. It's on my. It's, it's on my. But uh, yeah, he he didn't have to call me, but he did have to call me because the session, the the separated files. Of mm -hmm. the set and to get it mixed, and then, then I had, you know, what I'm saying help. help and you know, labels in. are stopped doing that. Most some labels stop doing it. Like they don't even give a fuck if it's a, a two track anymore. I, I understand. I, Crit makes his own beats. Crit produces right, right, like right, Jay right, right. Cole. Jay Cole just started working with other producers. He made his own beat. I mean, we was in the studio organizing all work, working with him, and he didn't use none of the shit that we did. He came out here and worked with other shit. But uh, yeah, man. Like at the end of the day. That was cool. That was cool in him because he had to do that because he shit. Right. And I sent him. I sent him the separated files and everything. But see, I know. I seen, I seen Big Crit at the uh, the record store store a uh, few few weeks ago, digging mm -hmm. this shit. I was like, Nah, bro. You can about dig in the same area. I'm digging. Nah. <laughs> what you got? Nah. <laughs> but yeah. Like, let's see. A lot of people. I mean, uh, a lot of people don't even know like how long I've been been. With Walker to this like this day behind the scenes help um doing Walker shit. Even like look look at 
Waka, he said something on my birthday, February the 7th. If you go on my page, though, like February 7th, I was sitting on the beach and Waka said, man, happy belated. Happy birthday. Y'all don't even know, man. Y'all don't even know, man, what, what the, uh, how long Speedy been got them helping me and getting me shit right? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'll tell the world that shit, nigga. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know, I just called, I talked to Waka the other, uh, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, man, like shit. That shit made me feel bad too. I was like, damn, man, like <laughs> I need to do better with myself and, and pick up the phone more. <laughs> but I be in my world world. Like you be in your world, but I be in my world world. Yeah, but so listen. So this is a secret to me. This this is my formula of how I get placed a heart how how I conduct my up my life for the last fucking 33 years in the music industry. I'm 44, but I've been in the industry 33 years. I started 12 years old. Anyway. So let me let me explain to y'all. I am great at producing, meaning I produce my ass off. My life is a production. I produce my life. <laughs> no, for real, he, he for real do this. <laughs> my life is a production, meaning I was a DJ and figured out how to take something that nobody fucking knew about it at that time and turn it into what we know now is hip hop music, all that shit. I started with R and B music and fucking old shit DJing. Now I produced that to my life. I came, I met Outkast and I knew there was artists and I knew Goody Mob and, and I knew there was artists. I was still learning how to make beats because my friend, my new friends I met need beats. I wanted beats. That's it. And I, That's how it usually works, though. But I had, but see, I didn't know that me having the outlet for the beats. See, most people try to make beats and then try to figure out who they're going to give them to. Mm -hmm. I got a phone and connections of people that need the beats so I can go make them and say, oh, this sound dope for Beyonce. Oh, this sound dope for Jake. This is the time dope. This, I got an outlet for them. See, the old niggas, the old, whatever, whatever you want to call it, all the producers, all the Bo people. Boomers. That's what they call them. Boomers. 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 Those are my peers. My peers run the music industry. My peers control the music industry. Right. The Still internet. Do. Still do. To this day. I'm on the phone. I'm on this thing with my, one of my peers. <laughs> he, he, they control what they do. Once you once you meet Leslie, it's a rap. <laughs> when you meet Leslie Breathway, it's like like it's a rap. It's a rap, dog. You you solidified. You're nice. So, so most most of y'all people, artists, producers, yeah, yeah, y'all are dope. But who cares? I, I you, listen. You you, you, <laughs> you produce together can make a beat, but a producer and an artist together can make a song. Right. So two producers come uh, trying try to make a beat. Who are we gonna give it to? Who gonna know that the beat dope? How are we gonna get it out to the world? Who gonna who gonna buy this motherfucker? Is it gonna be a hit? Is it gonna work? Uh, if we gonna get credit for it, it's too many variables. It's too many fucking variables. Everybody wanna make sound packs. Okay, who said I'm, somebody gonna use your sound pack? Make a beat with your sound pack. Give you credit for that shit. It makes some. Who? Who even said you gonna even hear that they even use your shit? Who just said that's your sound? You feel me? Like it's too many variables in this music industry. Right. So I guess they, they call that when, when it's saturated, or uh, everybody trying to do the same thing. See, I produce my life into doing producing and doing stuff opposite of what other people do do or uh, does. If somebody over here trying to get a placement with the artist that they see fucking or on top, like say, say you're trying to get at Beyonce in her DM or Jeezy or whatever, you're trying to get at these motherfuckers. Well, shit, I go holler at Max Goose or holler at goddamn uh, uh, Matthew <laughs> right. Rose or holler at uh, J, J, uh, you know what I'm saying, Jay Brown or Lenny S or somebody else to get to Rihanna. Hell yeah. Now, I don't try to go to Beyonce and Beyonce like, that keep, way. Keep, it, keep it fresh, though. You you work with any artist. That's the thing. Like, you don't just sit here and just try to throw all your eggs in one basket. Like, Right. Listen, I work with anybody who got that money. 
Listen, on, shout out to Goody Mob. It's on the Goody Mob DVD. This shit tattered on my arm. I got them beats. You got some monies? That shit on my arm. That shit been on my arm forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, but see, I know everybody's not going to be checking. Everybody's going to check for like Beyonce or Rihanna. I'm going to who behind them? How they became who they are? Somebody put the money up and, and it was behind them to, to help them get to where they at, right? Right. The daddy, the daddy birthday motherfuckers. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I like I I I understand. I think what it is is that you know everybody's so into uh, popping to the it guy that they don't realize that there's it guys that just haven't developed that that it factor yet. And then on top of uh, not getting that it factor going, uh, like they don't, they're not setting up their platform right. Like the biggest thing that you should do, and I'm just being. For for the twenty twenties is that you should show people that you actually give a damn about more than one person than, than yourself. You feel me? Right. And, right. and you know everybody's great, but what can you actually bring to the table? You know what I'm saying whether it be knowledge or whatever. And that that's exactly the core thing that you've been saying about your relationships that you have built with many people is because you have had the knowledge, you given them knowledge in different uh, right. aspects about life and their music that makes them feel that you're worth the time right. yeah but in a nutshell i bring people's money i bring people money and not, <laughs> asking, for money. not asking for money you feel me right. i bring something they can make money off to be able to pay me pay me back some money you feel me like say for instance i'm president of brit squad for waka right so i bring waka's stuff to make money off instead of him paying me a salary i get paid off of what i bring to the table Right. Like a manager, so, so to say, like man, man, but no, I bring million dollar deals and get paid off that instead of him had to pay me millions of dollars. Right. You know I mean? And it's my partner, you know what I'm saying? So different things like that, but that's, that's what organized noise. That's what you are life. That's just life. Like that's just me as a person, because the money, when it's, when he keeps saying, oh, don't chase the money, don't chase the money. Motherfucker, chase that goddamn money. Let me tell you why. <laughs> I I'll go left, I'll go right. No, it's facts. <laughs> Don't chase the money. Let me chase it, okay? <laughs> Come on. Hell no. Shit. I've been in both, both worlds, so I can tell you that. Like, nigga, you can't do nothing in this world without no money you can't help nobody without if you can't help your fucking self right Period. yeah you gotta you gotta take care of yourself before you be able to take care of others and shit like that man i, I wouldn't i wouldn't that's just a life thing i want to tell to every last person that's watching this motherfucking stream you can feel funny about that but you better be taking care of your goddamn self because they ain't right. nobody gonna fuck with you if you can't right. take care of your goddamn self they're gonna look at you crazy or they might fuck with you and then they get mad nobody's later gonna nobody's gonna fuck with you if you ain't got no money on no ways to make money even a bitch. She, they ain't go, I mean, she, a girl. <laughs> oh, girl. A girl. A girl. <laughs> I don't even fuck with you if you got no money. Meaning, they don't want no, it's not like have, physically you got to have a bunch of money for them. But no, they, you got to be able uh, like, to, to uh, upgrade. Beyonce told you better. Upgrade or uh, enhance the situation. It had had uh, Jay-Z rocking Tom Ford by the time. <laughs> what, what, by what year? <laughs> with some big ass, with some big ass pants to the goddamn uh, to so the butt. Quick, <laughs> quick. <laughs> but yeah, like, don't. Let, what it should tell you is, don't let the money change you. But see, money only brings out who was uh, what was already there anyway. Oh yeah, that was a good one. I, I, I remember you saying that yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Say that one more time. Money only brings out what was already there. They, they, that's a misconception when they tell you don't chase the money. Y'all, that's some bullshit. Y'all, y'all follow that. Y'all follow that. You want to listen? Chase that money, but don't let it change you. Only thing should change is your address, your bank account size, or like you know what I'm saying. Your business acumen should change. That's the only thing should change, not you as a person. But but yeah yeah yeah. But but what did you say about that about the about money changing people though? You, you... Money only brings out what, what was, was already there. there. If you were already right. an asshole and a, a fucked up person, a, a thief or whatever, let some money get. In, let, let's you get some money. Mm-hmm. They call you. They call that fuck you money. 
Mm -hmm. That's what they that's what they call it. <laughs> you money. Now shit. I got fuck you money. Okay. But you would never know that I got fuck you money because I'm still the same nigga. I'm I'm highly broke and barely rich. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no buffer. Uh, uh unapologetic. I don't got no problem saying, fuck no, yeah, I got it. Fuck no, you ain't giving it to you. Now what? <laughs> Because the quickest way to get somebody out your life is loan them some money. Because if if they need money, they can't pay you back. They got they got to be able to pay you back and pay what they can't pay now. What when, when they need some money? Yeah, yeah. Well, somebody somebody say loan I, money. I, 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 I'm gonna lose. So shit, I I, I ready to keep mine. I mean, <laughs> I feel like this when when it comes to loaning people money in the first place, like I don't you know, I give. It. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. That's that's exactly that's exactly what I was about to get to. I'm like, man, because. You can't expect for them to pay you back. With most of these folks out here, ain't gonna pay you back. Now if they do pay you back. Now that is saying something for sure. Now I got another theory about that. Uh oh. Money. Talk to them. Money can be given, and you're gonna spend it. But what if I could put you in a position where you can always make money and make me some forever? You feel me? Mm -hmm. I have something. Listen, what they don't teach the, the, the youngsters, I'm going to be, be going to teach. I am an old nigga. I'd rather be old rich me than broke new you. Meaning, <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning, <laughs> y'all watch these, y'all watch these motherfucking um, battles, right? These, these fucking, uh, what you call it? Versus battles, right? But y'all missing the goddamn one key thing. They're battling 20 songs or more. That's called a catalog. Every three months for the rest of their life, they get a check in the mail. Called a catalog. Mm -hmm. Not one placement. A catalog of placements. I have 380 something, 89 fucking placements in my catalog. Over 60 Billboard placements. Catalog. Ain't got too many hit records because I did whole albums. It's five to more, uh, five to seven songs on each album. But man, TV and, and movie money hit different anyways. So. We didn't get into that. That was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about a hit after, after you see a damn so check from I that. Did my, my Dream Christmas, I scored the whole movie and did the soundtrack all with using writers and producers. Uh, uh, I produced it all, but writers and, and my homies that want to sing and everybody, I put them on the fucking album. Like I use everybody that I already get money with, like on, on, behind the scenes on an album because they want to be artists. But I'm like, hey, the best way to be an artist is got to do it yourself this way. Woo, 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 woo. I, I'm one of the, probably the hottest rappers in movies. I rap too. I rap and sing all kinds of shit in my movies. I'm, I'm probably one of the hottest, hottest motherfuckers in movies. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the moral of the story is, chase that goddamn money. <laughs> and bring me some. God damn. Nope, I'll show you how to get it. <laughs> Yo. Uh, what we can do with money, listen, this, even this, this uh, Black Lives Matter and all that, I get that. L listen. Uh -oh. But we can't change nothing because we don't own nothing. We don't own shit. Only thing we produce around this motherfucker is sweat. Dancing, basketball, football, baseball, sweat. We don't own the team. This we don't dude own took my own. Instagram video. <laughs> nah, I'll just play it. Nah, that's real yeah. talk. We just, we talked we about that nothing. shit. We don't, we don't own, own shit except for like trends. Like what so, is that? We don't even own, own the music that we put out. Cause you do know those advances is advance on money is going to be made is recoupable until that to that until that shit makes some money you don't own it even when you need some money motherfuckers go sell their publishing nigga i i ain't never sold my publishing. I, I, I have my my catalog is mine i have an admin hell I niggas don't even ask for their goddamn pubs they they'll get their advance and they be like well it's shit this is the money i got right now I get some jordans get people a don't even know, people don't, producers out there y'all even know that when you get a placement on original beat you automatically 50% owner in the song. You're publishing, you don't gotta ask for something that's already yours. 
fifty percent of it's already yours. But they'll tell you to ask for that shit though. Yeah, yeah, they, they'll con you out of it because listen, they can't it, take it from twenty five, twenty five. You and the <laughs> artist, and fifty percent is going to the label because we got the publishing of this. No, nigga, that's my publishing. Listen, <laughs> and I never go to Nashville because if you're in the room. When something is made, I don't give a fuck. You sleep, drunk, whatever. If you're in the room when the song can be made, everybody get it split all evenly amongst everybody. Thirty-three to third, the three people that are split evenly amongst everybody. That's how Nashville roll. That's why you don't hear no, you don't hear no problems in Nashville. And then why us black black people? We all we all, we got all the drama. Nobody, no other industry got drama with music. I don't, know. I don't know about that one, dog. Cause, Ooh. cause rock, cause rock music for a hot minute, they just don't get the the spotlight thrown on them. But either way, that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse for all. Why the we shit build spotlight on ourselves? Then? Why, why we build our people up to tell them now? Why we do that? Why we build them up to tell them now? We build them up to tell them now. I've been asking that shit for years, bro. I've been asking myself that shit for years. Listen, we built Takashi Six Nine on up. We was, we was all with that fuck shit. Now that he got that tear that shit down. Oh, you're worried to cancel him. Cancel, cancel what? Y'all can't cancel shit. Y'all can't even cancel your own fucking ma- y- y- your fucking credit card. You can't cancel shit. You can't man, cancel. Man, seeing that dude for, uh, day one just didn't didn't look right. Everything didn't add up when I saw him day one. But guess what? Okay, so what you what you gonna do about it though? You can't like it's meaning. Well, well, the the main thing you could do about it is stop paying that dude attention. This, all you gotta do is stop talking about. It. That's how you make a nigga disappear. Stop talking about it. Stop supporting him. Even when you talk bad about him, they're still getting clicks. Yeah, he good or bad. bad, I'm still getting likes. I'm still getting clicks. Still, good or bad, you still gonna get. You're still gonna get talked about. That's engagement. That's called engagement. That's called. That's called money. He chasing the money. That nigga came out running. He came out chasing his money. Shit, he ain't had to uh, run, uh, chase it too hard because he was with uh, Great. I can't think of old boys. Yeah, Granger. That's Granger. That's Granger. Yeah, he got his, his behind the scenes. His people's behind the scenes. Is pushing the button like she, that's how Nikki got big in that dog. shit. Big how, dog too. The big dog. Big dog is behind him. Like people don't even know that. And people, uh, so I'm like, bro, y'all, y'all trip. See, y'all, y'all looking don't at the wrong shit. You're looking at him. He ain't the. He ain't the one. The it's big, big dog. It's, it's Benny and them behind him. Like I, I know, yeah, all them folk behind. But uh, listen, and you can't say, listen. How you gonna talk? Listen, you say something about you. Cancel him. Them niggas behind him will cancel you. You'll never make it. Shit, they just canceled the whole entire New York gang, bro. Boy, stop. Play, you better stop playing with them folk in the music industry. Because you got to think, it's called an entertainment business. They're in the business of making money off of entertainment. They don't care about your feelings. Fuck your feelings. They care about making money off of entertainment. That word culture vulture and all that shit, man, get this shit out of here. Yeah, they, don't, they care nothing about that shit. But... Well, you're real culture vulture all the way to the bank. Mm-hmm. Because you, you, still, you can't do nothing about it. You can't you can't do nothing. What you going to do about it? You don't, you don't own it. You don't own none of that shit. You're trying to get into that shit to get money out of that shit. I, I mean, I, I guess that's what you're doing it for. I don't know what uh, pe- some people are doing it for. Yeah, I mean, my thing is this. Uh, back to what you were saying as far as we don't own shit. We don't. Uh, I, 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 I beg to differ on a little bit because... Well, we we have the money. We have the money. We ain't uh, broke. Like if we talk about so-called black people, that's, a, that's what we own. What we own. That's exact. That's the thing. And that and the problem is, but behind that is that people don't want to wait. Like if we, if I use Kyrie Irving's situation where he was talking about building his own league or whatnot, and and people were talking about why would you uh, lead? This is the same uh, pro blackity blacks that be all over motherfucking Twitter and shit. It's like, man, Kyrie is dumb. How is he dumb for thinking? like a leader i was like or or not having a zach plan because the reality of the, of having a league is that you're bringing if it's a black league what 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 is an nba you're not it's not like the uh the xfl versus the uh the nfl my nigga like bro like i think people are so spoiled in the process like greed is so good to people that Watch they're this. not will don't understand what what proper ownership mean uh is and with ownership you can control a whole bunch of things. So I was like, man, so but, we are that fucked up in the game. Where so check this out. title? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Title Jay Z's title, right? Mm-hmm. And when Jay Z came out and he took all the artists and he took all the publishing, took all the music and he put it on a platform called Title. Mm-hmm. 
we dogged the shit out of that motherfucking shit. We talked so much shit, devalued the company to where he had to sell 20% of it to Sprint. Well, nah, when he it sold just 20- costs a lot of money to run a business like that, period. He he only needed support. He had he he paid, he had the company. The I if we're we're gonna start breaking down the business behind title, the 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 issue with title, what the way I see it from day one inception was they focused on artists and not the audience. The audience is the mass public people of people that was right. are going to intake that. They and just you, really put the spotlight on the artist, and that was the biggest mistake in that you're part right, of it. But you, you, you're absolutely right. But for one second, remember, this Jay Z knew connection with all the artists that are pop, was popular and had catalogs that was black, and was bringing them to one platform. He started with himself and his wife. It wasn't all Did, black either. Madonna, the uh, uh, listen, he started, he started with his community. He started with his people. You could because even, had- you could even, uh, and that's the other thing too. Let me, my, my bad. I don't mean to interrupt you. That was the sure. other thing because I wrote title, uh, early on, and I was like, man, how can I send my music to you? Well, we don't have a service right now to where you can send your music. I was like, whoa. So, so you have this big ass thing where you're talking about artists can get paid more, and there's no way for me as an independent artist to submit anything. All right, so let me break down. But that's been down- fixed. That's been fixed since know, then. But let me break down what Jay Z was trying to do. Okay. Since- so, so that you get a better understanding. You have, he left Rockefeller and he started Rock Nation. Nation. Well, Rock Nation is owned by Live Nation. Mm-hmm, which is a mass okay. conglomerate. Live Nation will buy your company, throw you a bunch of money and let you run it independent, run it like it's independent, like oh, it's yours. So, so, the, so basically it's an acquisition. So, so it's been acquired by a live yeah. nation. Independent. Is what you're Independent. Saying. Independent. Unless, it's a, unless it's a merger. Now, right. there's two differences live, between it. Look, go, no, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Go live ahead. Nation, live Nation is a touring company. They right. Yeah. yeah. Jay Z either going to get you on Rock Nation label or Rock Nation management because he knew he was prepaid for shows. If he got you in, into one of those, he could put you on the bill. For Live Nation, so he was the he, he Live Nation, a Rock Nation is really the company to to intersect of getting the big acts to come fuck with Live Nation and get a bag. Mm-hmm. Jay Z and Beyonce, woo, 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 they they knew that because Live Nation just just to do all their tours. Now Live Nation also owns Ticketmaster and Asomniac. Asomniac does the EDCs, all the big EDM shits. Mm. All that shit's run owned by Live Nation. Because it would be a monopoly if they just put a name on it. They had to, they had to get, buy all the shit and let people still run the company like it's theirs. But Jay Z found a bigger bag, two hundred something million. The first deal was, and then he don't recoup that shit by four or five times. Mm-hmm. Now, all the big acts are his homies. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, his, he managed them. Uh, da, 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 da. That's what built that. So then Jay Z found out about, hmm. The streaming bag. That's what title came into play. Yeah, because I mean that was an early because they he saw Pandora walk to the labels. He saw Spotify talking to the labels about music for service. And yeah, but, but I guess mean, what he did though. He's implement the same formula of getting his folk that he got connections to manage. We got him on his lap. He got the same people and took them. Bring your catalog over the title. Just build our own streaming platform, which is genius. But the little people didn't benefit from him beginning because he's trying to get something up and running. He was trying to get it up and running. So we little people or whatever are talking shit because we can't got them get in and do what we want to do to get on in that process of him trying to get his shit going to make it make sense for us. You feel me? So he can't he doing the same thing with the NFL. He got to get in there to be able to change it. You can't change it on the sideline. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, everybody kneeling. Okay. Now what we do? Now what we do? Oh yeah. So we, we figured out it wasn't about Kaepernick getting no, no job. It was about police killing us black people. So now what we do? See, everybody got, you got to have some kind of solution. 
You know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean, the solution is simple. I mean, first of all, everybody got opinions on what to do. First of all, no, no. Nah, nah. The biggest thing that is just black, money. Is, is money. actually define what, understand what culture is. Once you understand what your culture is, yeah. then you can actually build a community around that. And that also starts with you being able to take care of yourself before you get, right. uh, right. before you get Keisha. Tupac, <laughs> pregnant. Tupac said it best. <laughs> you can't go to the wall without no money. Get your money right. Right. First you get the money. Then you get the power, the Scarface. Because these folk, this world, this, 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 this United States of America, because I ain't black, I ain't black or white, that's a whole name. But this United States, of, I'm a U.S. citizen, so I'm a U United States of America wasn't made for us. We built it for them for free, but it wasn't made for us. Now, the only way to have something in here is 40 acres and mule. We're waiting for them to give us that. No, nigga, we got to take it. We well, don't want to put that. We want to put put our money in. I mean, when I come I mean, up, I mean that's my that's that's what they did. We don't, don't spend our, 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 our money on our own people. So we get some. So we get some money from the white people. We go give it to other white we people. Go, we go back to other white people. Gucci, Prada, goddamn, all that shit. Nigga, go watch how how it's made. All that shit made by the same people. Just put a different name on the motherfucker. <laughs> how to sell the Negro? They've been selling us shit since 1954. And say, oh yeah, it's made by black people. But it's made by white people. Well, I mean, that's obvious. If you sit there and look at Nike, I mean, they got Michael Jordan. They that was the that's the whole entire thing. They got Michael Jordan to make sure they got LeBron, and, and ain't nothing but a uh, Caucasian. <laughs> ain't nothing but a Caucasian Jew on top of all that shit. Wait they for even, Michael uh, Jordan. They been they been killing us. Wait for Michael Jordan. Right, right, right. It's my Ebony magazine, Ebony Jet and Hugh, Ebony Jet and Hugh magazine. You think it's black magazine, right? No, it's not. on white people. Fuck Bob Johnson just sold motherfucking BT back to Viacom, but it already was Viacom. So right. It's a trick. Viacom already had BT. Yeah, they gave got... him that money and shit. I, I was who was I? All right, it wasn't you. I was arguing about uh, with, about that about Viacom and BET and all that stuff. It was somebody I mean, else. I was just like, are you really for real? You for real that BET was always black owned until they sold it to Viacom? I said, you really think that shit that they would they all, actually allow they us? It been Viacom. It been Viacom from day one. Right. I was and like, Bob, Bob bought it, and then he sold it. Had to sell it right back to him, because the lady used to have it. The lady used to uh, have it. Before. There's all kinds of agendas that we don't we don't look at. But I mean, I digress from that, man. I just say man, to these, I just say these, to the young all heads all these, out there, all these major labels ain't even U.S. labels. They, they owned by overseas, but Europeans, Europeans own all these motherfuckers. Universal, Universal owns uh, Universal, Sony, and Warner Bro and Warner Brothers. All that shit is movie companies. That shit come from overseas. Well, well, Sony is definitely, definitely a Japanese oh, it's company. Chinese. You know that Chinese. No, Sony. no, sir, it's Japanese. Got my guy, no disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a Chinese man to come and smack the shit out you and then a Japanese man? Asian. It's Asian though. <laughs> well, there you go. We could generalize it. But yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. You know, and again, I, I was trying to tell I, Universal is a uh, European. Yes. Uh, but I was trying to tell people like uh, these big conglomerates, they got big because they were small at first, and but they kept uh, money circulating in their communities and stuff like that, and that okay. is exactly how we need to do. It. If we're gonna if we're gonna ride with this so called black shit and all this stuff, dog, we need to stop well, posting black, posting niggas getting we killed. Black owned, what we have that's black owned that we use and we need necessity to buy. We don't even fucking own two pieces of soap on no on no toilet paper. Well, Pete, Master P was trying to do that. What? Uh, what yeah, the beginning of the he year, did. and they just they criticize the fuck out of his ass. And I'm trying to tell you that we build our people up to Tim now, and we don't know what we fucking be canceling the wrong shit. Anyway, we don't own shit. We don't own a motherfucking thing. We don't own toilet paper, toothpaste, soap, fucking drawers. Remember, Kevin Hart tried to do underwear. We shot that shit down. Uh, did did he? This is try to do yum, yum, yum. yeah. He, remember he made the underwear. Those fucking underwear. Um, I forgot the name of them shit. He tried to do the underwear. Procter and Gamble. Uh, 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 uh Procter and Gamble and um. PPN, PPMG and all them them corporations on all the necessities. When when COVID hit, what we needed, we needed uh soap, wash your hands, Clorox. Shit, mask, bro. Uh, you know ice how much ball. how ice much ball. money a business um, probably made just from making damn mask alone? I mean, it's still money, a lot of money out there, but now it's it's saturated. But Man, I, no, I think they probably made 
billions just off of mask. One dollar mask. I, I made stupid money because I started. I, I came and started. But I bought all the stock and all the shit that y'all that uh, motherfucker need. Kroger. I, I killed. I committed killing with Kroger and and uh, the Kimberly Clark company that had Lysol. Oh man, shit. I I spent a thousand dollars and made ten thousand dollars in two days. Shit. I'm like, oh, <laughs> boy, y'all. Everything I had to buy, I went and bought stock in that shit. I was about to say, I was like, because everybody's like, I got a lot of homies that's trying to press me about this stock shit, man, this stock and trade shit. And I'm just okay. like, that's, that's my bag right there. I love that shit. And, Listen, all and, I got the music industry, I don't put back in there. I take it and put it everywhere but the music industry. And then it take, I, yeah. And put it, and put it into other shit. I mean, Lane, stocks. And I don't got no kids and I ain't married. So you already know I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm having, woo. I've always been there on quarantine though. Because people always contact me. Like, shit. Man, what you got? Boy, boy, we really need you now, boy. We at the house. We need you big. Cool. Cash out, <laughs> PayPal. Which one? Which one? Which one? <laughs> and when you pick the one you like, got that. I send the session. Dope, dope soul money fold. <laughs> <laughs> they just starting to open up the studios again. Like, some studios acting a little funny, I but. I think open. I could have went, went to Stank on anybody. But, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what's going on because there ain't no such thing as keeping it real no more. I, I, just, I mean, I, I only could be me. It, 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 some people, some people can't understand. Like, uh, oh, I rather, I, I'm, I love being old. I rather being older or whatever. I, I, I just like because I, I went through a lot. I made it cool for some of y'all goddamn people to be able to do what y'all do. <laughs> Part of that movement, that 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 early movement to what it is now. What, what, what do you think about a lot of the music right now? I just want to ask you this. I, I ain't trying to press you about it because you know it's it's totally it's it's still flipped again. Well, I still DJ around the world, so I only listen to music. I only listen to music to find out what's popular or popping in those in that area to be able to play if I go DJ. However, labels and companies still send me music all the time. I get fucking everybody song. I love little baby. I love little baby since day one. I heard. Well, that's baby. home team. That's that's home, that's home team though. What about the baby though? He from he he's he's that's from home, my. Oh home. yeah, that's right. That's home team too. I mean, technically, that ain't by in here. Uh, I, I like the fact that Arnold Taylor, shout out to Arnold Taylor. Arnold Taylor finally got some. Cause I remember Arnold Taylor used to work records for years and years and years, and he mm-hmm. always stayed in South Carolina, North Carolina, to try to get. Cause that was his market, South Carolina, North Carolina, to work records, and he finally said, "Man, I want to get my own label. I want to get my own artist." Da, da, da. And he finally found the baby and got him popping. Shout out to Arnold Taylor. Now, with that being said, that's the person behind the baby. Now, the baby, I fuck with his music because it's dope. One and two, I fuck with Arnold Taylor. So, I'm a little biased when it comes to certain things. Feed me, fucking me, and financing me. That's my triple F life. I, I listen and fuck with shit that I'm involved with or got a ties to or other than that. It doesn't do nothing for me. Now, back in the days, because I grew up on it and and I, again DJed my whole life, like all that shit, I listen to music differently. Now, eh. You ain't got to really push button if you, if you don't have to these days. Right. You really don't like. You really. That's the thing. That's the scary thing for the uh, the newer, the next generation artists is like, like nobody really has to push button on you for real. Like you better get your TikTok popping. Up, oh, that shit's got to get taken away. Now you got to get your IG popping, uh, all that shit, and and that's it. Only hits a certain demographic, so it's kind of more important to be uh, popping on social media than it is for your uh, record to be popping per se first. Um, that's that's kind of the crazy part, but it's kind of good to see somebody like the baby uh, squeeze through the cracks. You know what I mean? Uh, in the times like these, because how how could you how could you not missing that is actually uh, underappreciated, especially in that particular part of the region. You know what I mean? Like that that's necessary. So when our ears when the ears are blind, that's 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 a that's a uh, that's, that's a an analogy. Yes. Ears are blind, right? I'm broke, nigga. I'm broke. Go to WeBuyBlack.com, and there are plenty of black products oh, fully yeah. black owned from a, child, a child laundry detergent one. to light bulbs to cell phones. 
Oh, that that's that's actually a good point. Appreciate the donation uh, channel uh, channel five oh one music yeah, music. But uh, yeah, that, I think that was uh, Jay Z. Jay Z actually established that uh that you that by that, the, web, by, yeah. that web address. Yeah, I actually caught yeah. wind of that the other day. I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, ears are blind, meaning if you heard a song, right, and this song is jamming like a motherfucker, but you don't know the artist, you don't know what it looked like, whatever. Does that, when does being famous allows the ears to be blind? If somebody put out a song and it's jamming in a motherfucker, mm-hmm. does it make you want to go listen and find those artists and, and find that artist? Uh, See, I mean, yeah, if the song is jamming, but I mean, in my age bracket, I'm not trying to go to the club like that. So no, no, what I, other I ain't outlets talking, are I'm they? In general, just, just going through rabbit holes or just, just in general, because like J.D. JD Smith did that to me. Like, I heard that goddamn I'm an icon living. Hey, I was like, who the fuck is that? Icon living. Who the fuck is that? I say Jaden. Jaden Smith. Well, it's possible <laughs> snapping back in the day, man. I, I don't expect nothing less from uh man, that's but the album sh- stupid. Like the right, album right. that shit maybe go buy the album digitally. <laughs> and then find out with Jaden. I'm like, hold up. Hello, little partner. God damn, let me holler at you, goddamn, because I was working actually was working on his dad's shit uh when I was in LA. I was working on, 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 Will still got it. Now. I don't give a fuck. Shout out to Jazz Jeff. What up, Je- uh, Jeff? But yeah. But if I, I heard Jaden and it was just, it was just a dope ass song. His dad is underrated, man. His dad, his dad is underrated. So you, you would expect him to fly under the radar just a little recently, bit. Recently, I was riding and I heard on the radio, 107.9, Little baby song for the Black Lives Matter. That shit. That's nigga. Yeah, I didn't know one. baby. That shit jamming it up in. Till you say the little baby. I said, oh, that's baby. I'm like, oh shit. It was jamming though, and it was different. See, that's another. That's another goddamn. That's another goddamn clue. Different going wins regardless if it's bullshit. You remember JJ Fish? Remember Jay, that JJ yeah, Fish yeah, dude? Yeah, the goop, the the dude that that was. That thought yeah. he, in his mind thinks that he's great, but everybody loves him because he's not great. Because he was not great. Good or bad is going to get likes to anything that's different. Right. That's why motherfuckers get, you don't understand. You want to get famous? Do something dumb. Do something different. Oh, Wear a dress. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Wear a dress. Got them sing on a record wrong. JJ Fish. That motherfucker got them. Remember Ho Yang Chang? Ho Yang from the um American Idol, the Ho Yang motherfucker? Uh, how, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, oh Yang or how you? Uh, uh, no. Uh, she hung, banged. Hung, she had. Hung, uh, you, you're, you're 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 combining the name with the song. She bangs. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot his name. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I remember that. Different wins. That's well, why you gotta look at who. First of all, why everybody that's popping is not independent, and then secondly. Why everybody that's popping is not like the other? See this? They said it's room for everybody. Uh, William Hung, that was the name. Everybody at the top. It ain't room for everybody at the top. It's room for everybody in the industry, but not room for everybody at the top. It got to be some generals and some soldiers and some motherfucking cooks. That's why you got writers, producers, engineers, managers, fucking publishers, uh, publicists. It's called the music industry. That's why I understand why people are talking about, oh, Drake got a writer. Who said you had a write? Nelly, I'll tell you shit. I don't give a fuck about who wrote that motherfucker. I got a hit. I think the argument was you can't be the best person in hip hop. You can't be the best said, hip- as uh, with, if you're not writing your rhymes. But, so, but so, the so, other argument that his team was putting out there, which makes sense as well, was that we're rewriting the way that hip hop is going to be uh, uh, defined as far as music goes. So that all means right. if he's using Dr. artists, that's not, that's not one of the best producers when he don't make all his beats. Mailman, fucking um, Warren G. Uh, what's the boy name from Atlanta? Um, Focus, Focus, fucking uh, Scott Storch. Like, come on now. Shit, even Anyway Mafia, Metro, all of them make beats together. So, so that's that's fucked up. You can't. You got writers. If I wrote, so if I wrote you a hook to to a beat, and you rap till you wrote your verses, mm-hmm. does that that, that make you that make you a, a, a non great 
writer or a nigga, fuck being great. Uh, give me the great money and get great hits. Because it's part of the music industry, though. You know what I'm saying? It's part of the it's part of the game. You got to have writers. So you're gonna take food out of somebody else's mouth because uh, the, the the world's like, oh, you can't do what what does what does that what does that give you that, that accolade right, if, of the best? At, at a certain you? at a certain point, you got to stop caring what of what others think, especially if they're trying to if they fucking up your bag and they don't exactly. understand how they're getting the bag, man. Like you can't listen to them. They trick you off the motherfucking streets. They would trick you off the streets and take your bag. Fifty Cent did did it good. He tricked Jairu out of his motherfucking bag ASAP. <laughs> He started talking about the way he sang, and then we turn around, start singing the same way he sang. <laughs> well, the the again, that's how you play. That's uh, that's the laws of power right there. Forty eight laws of power. Uh, yeah. If you ignore somebody, then they can't they can't gain from it. But if you once you once you pay them attention, uh, you, and you don't have a plan to destroy them, they they're gonna gain from that point on. It's kind of like what Freddie Gibbs is doing to uh, DJ Academics, like. DJ Academics right. claims that he's so much better than him, but Freddie Gibbs is a nobody. But why are you paying this nobody attention? And then once he he's nothing to lose. He ain't got nothing to lose. Freddie Gibbs ain't got nothing to lose. Right, exactly. And all he's I doing is doing all... short. Yep. I forgot. He, I forgot he was a part of CTE too. I keep on forgetting that. So you already know. But also, uh, it's enough information. It's see all that clout chasing and got them. Uh, uh, talking about people and all the different shit. I, I, it, it also puts you on, on the spotlight to give people other information and more against you. Right. Like, they got a lot of shit to talk about him, but they ain't got shit to talk about Freddie Gibbs. You don't know shit about Freddie Gibbs to talk about. Just like me. Like, I can sit here talk mad shit. Nobody knows shit about me except people who know about me. They know that everything I'm saying is the truth. Right. But who cares? Who cares? As long as I don't say nothing to fucking fuck up my bag. Who cares? Because the to the world that that Freddie Gibbs, Freddie Gibbs gonna always kill academics because to the world academics. Not to mention he dropped a really hot album at, towards the end of the of the year, so basically he just got uh, more ears. Uh, yeah, he, on got, Freddie he, Gibbs. Right like, it, it, he did the right thing. He did Takashi Six Nine just aimed at one person. <laughs> and, and you know what's you know what's funny though about that is that that whole Takashi Six Nine situation is crumbling too because. Now people are looking at him as far as his credibility, and that and pl plenty of journalists has uh, warned him about that. Like you can't just wash your hands and just walk away from every situation that you actually have been a part of. Like you're gonna at, at one point somebody's gonna turn uh, turn the uh, into your direction and are going to like you know like hell. Yeah. Just say say you one of the extra game members that didn't get locked up. You feel me? Because uh -huh. that always happens. There's always one, right? Yep. And, and academics go go walking and trolleying uh, to to his studio or whatever, thinking he's cool because of security. And that dude don't be like, man, I don't give a fuck about no security today. Rat. Yep. <laughs> and really, he fucked up even more because he ended up saying that shit about Christy Teigen. I don't think people understand how how big Christy Teigen is. Yep. Like y'all might want to uh, do some research on uh, on her to see where why DJ Academics might not have a career. Uh, the outside of his YouTube channel, and that could even get fucked up because this, the way YouTube is working. Can everybody, anybody can get touched if somebody want them bad enough. Anybody, all these motherfuckers can get touched, right? If somebody want them bad enough, because it won't even be the motherfucker that you think coming to get you. It, it gonna be a motherfucker that you had beef with that ain't got nothing to do with the Freddie Gibbs. Going to use the Freddie Gibbs as a as a tool to come get you, right? And be like, oh, Freddie Gibbs did it. <laughs> a fan or or, or somebody. It can touch if you want to. Yeah, and then it's just not the li that type of lifestyle of of living like a, a a total fuck boy and doing fuck boy things. Yeah, that just brings so much bad to to the like who wants to hide just so they can be famous. It, it, hiding with your money ain't gonna do anything anyways. There's a lot of us that that want to live our best lives that we can't because of co because of COVID. You know what I mean? Right. So hiding with your money even after COVID per se, if we directly say that shit just disappear and you can't go nowhere. You gotta appreciate that sub. Uh and you and you can't go nowhere in the middle of all this shit that's happening. Uh that's not happening anymore. Like the coast is clear. We can all go outside. We can all travel and shit like that, but you gotta travel different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every time. Every time. Extra different. Well, that, that, that's that's on that's on them. 
Right. <laughs> I know, I know. Ain't my life. Ain't my. I'll give two fucks. That ain't that, my life, bro. But shoot, man. Well, I, let's I, go ahead. I've been doing nothing on my own. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot. Let's go ahead and wrap this up, man. I I appreciate everybody. Thank you so thank much, you, DJ. So much. Speedy, 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 Speedy. Tune in, man. That's it, it, thank you. Yeah. Uh, all your fan, all your uh, your follows and stuff. But uh, if y'all want to check him out, I got all this stuff in the uh, description, man. I got all this information and all that stuff. But go ahead and get some more words up in there. Yeah, I'm about to say. Uh, did I answer the whole uh, all the questions of? Oh, we talked about a lot, man. <laughs> we yeah. talked for about nigga. We talked for like a work shift. Shout out to Shotty Red. Shotty Red. Yeah, shout out Shotty Red. Toom, uh, Fat Boy, because I know Fat Boy gonna get in the DMs. We go back and say Shotty Red. Speedy talking about you. Shotty Red already know that. Speedy, Speedy on the talk talk good about me. <laughs> this I know. I know. I don't tell the truth. That's I don't got no no opinions. I only could tell you my journey, my experience, what I know, like what I know. Now, hopefully, what I went through can help y'all, and you can use some of it, but. My journey was my journey, and I'm still going through my journey. So, so hopefully, you know, reach out to me. I'm I'm here. Like any, any, anything you need, got there. I'm 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 with it. Yeah, all this uh, all this uh, social medias is in the description. Uh, his Twitter. I got his uh, the YouTube channel as well. He just started his YouTube uh, YouTube channel, and I think I I think I might have the IG in there. If I don't, I'll probably just add it. Is that Harvey Miller Music? Yeah. So. But yeah, yeah, uh, no doubt, man. Uh, I I definitely appreciate you for uh, for chopping it up both today and yesterday, man. I really enjoy it. Uh, the the oh, you know what we forgot about? Uh oh, man, the music monetization act. Well, no, nah, we talked about that. No, we didn't talk about the music monetization act by uh, 2018 when Kanye got them and Trump signed the damn bill, but but money uh, okay. getting paid for streaming and all that music. Well, just we'll talk about it another day, but. Just tell you, tell everybody to go, go look up the music monetization act. This is what you can type: Kanye West and Trump signs music act. It's gonna come up in 2018. I was part of that too. Now, 2018, there's a there's a law, a law for music. It helps us. It was for Kanye West, but it helps us. Your mu your beats can be more than just beats. If you know, come holler at your boy. You got, you got, you got to come holler at us. You need some money for that, though. That, <laughs> oh, not no. <laughs> no, that don't. Look it up. Do my research for the Music Monetization Act. Uh, we we'll probably do some other stuff. Like, like we might do a beat, like a beat review or some shit. I, yes. I don't know if it, I want to do a beat battle, but we 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 get into that. I want to do a beat battle, and you know, you know, my prize is gonna be. Uh, a actual placement, <laughs> actual fucking placement with art. You ain't gonna give them a, scar a scarlet two i two and send them on, it, on their way. Take for the rest of your life. <laughs> right. You gonna get you gonna get a a, a a prize that you can actually do something with. Kenny beats. beats. We're coming, We're coming for you. For you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, uh, try to get up with him too. Like he, 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 I, I've, been, I've been checking this shit out. Yeah, well, I see you doing, pal. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. I, 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 I've known Kenny Beats for a minute. I'm just quiet. I'm just quiet about people I know, but I've definitely uh, chopped it up with him before. A few EDM times. music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he, when he was doing his thing with Loud Pack or whatnot, yeah. like they, when the EDM scene was really hard out here, uh, he yeah. was definitely uh, fluid as far as that. Same thing with Boiler Room, which I, yeah. we got something planned a little later when this COVID shit get out the fucking way. Uh, we got. Some, yeah. Huh. Liquefied, liquefied Friday still going on at uh, what's the name at um downtown uh at the damn club what's the damn I forgot the name of that damn club. Yes, there's too many damn EDM clubs, but one of them, the one of the biggest ones, uh, Iris just closed down. Yeah, yeah Iris, and then what's the other one with downtown though? Uh, I can't God, think man. of it, but boy, was that shit always lit though. Yeah, Thursday night was nigga night, and then Friday nights was uh. EDM. <laughs> Why would you say it like that? Hip hop night, bro. <laughs> God, God, damn. Night, nigga night. Thursday night and uh, shout out, shout out to y'all, man. I'm gone. I'm gone. See that? Uh, you better, you better let the, you better let the gangster come out. <laughs> <The gangster. laughs> All right, guys. I'm about to hit y'all right. with that stamp. <laughs>